If we have a requirement to add a cloud storage bucket to a Google Cloud Backup and DR, the way we do this is that we go to Cloud Storage here in the console, we select Create Bucket. Now, if you do not have a role that allows you to create buckets, you'll need to add one. The most common role often given is simply Cloud Storage Admin. Uh, the tasks are fairly simple. We need to uh, name our bucket. The bucket names need to be globally unique. We then need to choose our region. Now you should choose a region which best suits the desired location of your backup. It's very easy to say. Sometimes it can be very hard to do because you need to have a clear understanding of where your source data is, where you're envisaging a disaster recovery recovery site would be. If you're not sure, often it's simply easiest to choose multi-region because uh, that's guaranteed to be regionally accurate based on where you're physically located, but you might have government approval requirements that might prevent that. So choose either multi-region or specific region. Once you've done that, then hit continue. Choose your default storage class. Now for Google Cloud Backup and DR, we recommend you use Nearline if your backups are going to be retained for 30 days or less, or Coldline if your backups are going to be retained for 90 days or more. You might be thinking, ah, but I need a 60 day re retention period, in which case you need to decide possibly Increase your retention to 90 days because cold line is, is pitched at 90 days or decrease it to 30 days. Or if you want to go in between, probably just stick with cold line. Hit continue. From a access control perspective, always leave it on uniform. Hit continue. From a protection tools perspective, always leave it on none and then hit create. Once your bucket has been created, one last task to do is to go down to permissions. Under the permissions folder, one of the things you want to do is ensure that the Envault user you created earlier, and you might have called it something else, is listed as a principal. The other thing you might want to do is remove any other service accounts that you feel do not need access to this. Be careful you don't want to remove them all because then you might not have access to the bucket within this UI, uh, but certainly it is something to consider. Uh, you absolutely though want to ensure the, the user that is going to be used to access the bucket is listed here as one of the users. Once you've done that, the task is complete.